Can the Qur'an be understood without hadiths? Do the hadiths explain the Qur'an? As you know, the issue of hadith is a very serious issue for Muslims. Let's first describe what we understand when we say hadith. As it is known, the Holy Qur'an is the word of God from beginning to end. And God has revealed this word to Muhammad. And Muhammad has communicated these to people firsthand. Therefore, the Qur'an, from the beginning to end, is actually the real hadiths of Muhammad, based on revelation. Meanwhile, we see the distinction between messenger and prophet as very important. You can refer to our other videos on the topic. The Qur'an is the revelation of Prophet Muhammad, from beginning to end. When we say hadith, it's common to also refer to what we perceive as the classical hadith, actions or statements attributed to Prophet Muhammad. Not only that, even those that are attributed to his companions and successors. These are also commonly called hadith. The Holy Quran is entirety of hadiths from during 23 years of Muhammad's prophethood, which were gradually conveyed from beginning to end. But don't get me wrong. This means these hadiths are truly God's words based on revelation. Explained within these hadiths are how Prophet Muhammad spread the message, how he struggled with the idolaters, the people of the book, and other groups. How did he migrate? What kinds of difficulties did he face? What kinds of judicial decisions did he take? Which decisions were right, which were wrong? Where has he been warned and where he has he not? Mecca period, Medina period, wars, family life, private life, until the last moment of his death, all communicated by the Holy Quran from moment to moment. Therefore, I express this in many settings as follows. The Quran is the true hadith of the Prophet Muhammad based on revelation, the word of God, the way, the sunnah of the messenger, and the biography, the seerah of the Prophet. It is a book that contains all of this. So, is all this not enough for us? Do we think that some things are missing? And do we need to consult some other narrations so we can understand the Qur'an? When we say yes to this question, we put ourselves in a serious set of contradictions. One, we would end up implying that God has not been able to convey enough information to us, even though He has sent us 6,236 verses convo conveyed through the life of the Prophet and his messengership over 23 years. Two, that some of this information we need has been hidden, concealed, and that we need to refer to certain people to get it. Three, Surah Al-Ma'ida, chapter 5, verse 67 reads, O Messenger, announce that which has been revealed to you from your Lord, and if you do not, then you have not conveyed his message. Based on this statement and, and others in many other verses, we would say that the messenger of God had not fully subjugated the revelation that God has sent down to him and did not communicate it to us in its entirety. These are very dangerous statements. We cannot say such things. The hadiths that we call classical hadiths are historical texts. They can be applied in their own context, and they can be used. You cannot say that hadiths are essential for understanding the Qur'an, though. In appropriate verses, perhaps different perspectives may be gained based on context from some hadiths. But if the issues I just mentioned are not taken into account, it can cause serious errors. Therefore, the Qur'an itself is a clear, distinct, mubin book by itself. There is no need for additional explanation of a clear book. 
which supersedes previous books and previous revelations. The Qur'an itself is a book that explains itself. In this sense, we should not confuse delving deep into certain matter, tafsil, with mere explanation. We can elaborate on another matter. The Qur'an is a self-explaining book. No further explanation is needed. We can say that the most essential thing needed for understanding the Qur'an is if we talk about something other than the Qur'an is wisdom, which is a manifestation, ayah, from God as well. Thus God explains His manifestations with His other manifestations. Another type of manifestation is creation, kauni. God has verbal manifestations such as the verses of the Qur'an that are also created, kauni, manifestations everything in the universe are such humans the sky the atmosphere nature plants animals the moon the sun medical practices are all created count manifestations while we are trying to understand the quran we can consult to them and we should and each one is valuable in its own context. Going besides this would be claiming the insufficiency of the Qur'an, which is unacceptable.